You know how much I like being up here, so come on in and enjoy the show. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, so what's going on today? You can smell it, can't you? I think the message is going to be awesome. I can smell that too. So, it's always good to have free gifts from heaven, but it's also our responsibility to take care of those gifts, so I'm sure it should be right on. Uh, if you guys missed it this morning, we're by the basic class will be back February 28th. And as always, the instructor has one way of going to do things, and the chief instructor has a different way of going to do things. So we're learning how to transform our minds. Woo! I like that. Yeah. So, and by the time the by the time the summer's over, I'll have 15 theologians back there. <laughs> Uh, Friday night, there's a big book study here at 6 p.m. every Friday night. And if you guys are hungry for a safe way to be men, Saturday morning at 8, there's a men's revival group that we meet. Not to say it's about that. <laughs> what stays in that group just stays in that group. Let them get out. So oh, okay. yeah. you're free to share. You know how us guys like to share. Yes. And we had like, what, nine people like yesterday? So it was awesome. So that's uh, the. That link is on Facebook. When you get to Facebook on the Living Word Chapel page, click, click on that and away you go. There is five ways to give. Text to give, 844-608-5710. There it is right there. Lisa's not showing bug funny cartoons up there. Venmo, Living Word Chapel, PayPal, livingwordchapel.com. Mail and fill the baskets. The best. So, uh, what's coming up? What's coming up? Uh, oh, Tyler, where are you at, man? February 28th, the next meal is tacos. So if you need any instructions on how to make tacos, stay up, Tyler. Bring your A game, I will be critiquing all of you. <laughs> uh, like I said, the 28th of February is the next Bible basic class. Uh, February, or February, March 7th at 9 a.m. is Pancake Breakfast. <laughs> Come hungry, go out full. And then uh, starting in March, we're excited for this, is Transformation Classes taught by our transformed leaders, Stephen Ronda. Uh, Libby's going to be preaching here in a second. If you guys have, we have nursery needs. If any of you have been touched in your heart to help serve with the nursery or children's church, Contact one of us in the leadership team. We will point you in the right direction so we can teach our future leaders, yes. our future warriors, how to serve Christ. And that starts at age zero. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's it. I'm my pleasure to introduce Miss Lily. She's going to be rocking the boat with spiritual gifts. So come on yeah. up. at a different uh, facility and he came in and he said, I want to serve, but guess what? Today is his 60th birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Day. Oh, and it's Valentine's Day, and right away the Holy Spirit told me to tell you 
that this is going to be the year he's taking you back to your first love. Come on. He's Whoa. intimate father's heart kind of a love of, of something that you've never known before so 60 he's blowing the lid off of this year uh, and taking you right back to your first love so happy yeah. birthday Paul. Yeah. he could have even muted me and he didn't <laughs> going to miss people so if I'm missing somebody somebody let me know but on Thursday I know well throughout the week and leading up to Thursday there were many of you who poured a lot of time and energy and heart into um, serving the home family and Eckhart Linder families really 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 well so specifically I wanted to say thank you to Mike and Terry Higgins yes. they go? Children's Church back there, Mike and Terry, um, they did a whole lot with decorations. I know Dale and Sue Reba, you guys don't see or hear a lot from them, but they're sitting in the back there, probably not. Members, um, Cecily, where are you, darling? Oh, she's in the nursery. You guys, there's like 700 children back there today. <laughs> a lot of kids. Cecily, I was here a whole lot of the day. Alicia and Matthew, they're also Ooh, working back yeah. there. The worship team. You guys, I know people took time off of work, and the second the first chord started, I just thought to myself, I don't know if I could do what they're doing right now. Right. Uh, so worship team, right. thank you guys for that. <laughs> um, Mona, she put in a lot of hours for the PowerPoint presentation and the uh, video compilation. I mean, I if there is something uh, like electronic to be done or like digital tech thing to be done, if Mona can't do it, it can't be done. And so uh, when we, you know, we I said here are like 700 photos. Good luck. <laughs> She's like, I got it. So Mona, thank you so much. Who am I missing? I know I'm. And I know several of you brought like desserts and bars and you just like poured out time and energy and heart so just thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you you serve well this place is a place of generosity i can't yes. look at this front row because i'm going to cry this place is a place of generosity but you're generous beyond just with finances you are generous with your finances but you're generous generous with your time your talents and your just like heart so just keep being you you guys are doing a good job being you hold on hold on <laughs> My wife spent every day two weeks two weeks prior to Thursday and every day after Thursday pulling all the strings behind the scenes in ways that I was like shocked. She's you say we did it. I, I, I did very I, I spoke and I went and hung out with Matt. Um, <laughs> she did everything. So a round of applause for my wife. about uh, the how and why of it, the who we are as Living Word Chapel, what do we believe and why do we believe it? Are you guys enjoying this series? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think it's, as leaders, as those of us who have been teaching, I think it's been really good for us too, because it's always good to just go back to, you know, sometimes you can just get in the operating system, but you don't ever figure out the function. And so it's been really good for us too to go back to some of the roots of all that. So we've talked about worship, and we've talked about communion, and we've talked about... Um, Tithes and also, I mean, every every little bit of it. But today we're going to talk about spiritual gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about giftings, um, and you know what they are, how they're given, and how to steward them well. Okay. Um, so, how many of you in this room know that there are probably as many variations of God as there are humans on the planet? Right. 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 <laughs> John and I were talking about that yesterday. He. he 
he and God were having a conversation, and God said, don't try to make me the version of you that, don't try to make me the version that you want me to be in you. Right. Let me be the version that I want to be in you. Right. And so then we started talking about, like, how many variations are there of God? You know, because Sean and I, if we hang out there, like, we just go into these lighthearted conversations about the book of Revelation. Like, we don't do anything <laughs> lighthearted. Or just, it goes always deep. So we just started talking about, well, how many variations of God are there? Um, and so I want to start with, we're going to go through a whole lot of scripture today. So if you have your Bibles and your thumbs, get them ready because we've got a lot of work to do, but it's going to be good. We're going to start with Matthew 5, verse 14. And this first verse that I'm reading is out of the Passion Translation. So Matthew 5, verse 14. Before we start, Father God, I just ask for your words to be my words. I just ask for your anointing to be on me today and that, that as I minister, that I would minister what you need for us to hear, what you yes. need me to hear and for each of us individually, those of us um, watching on um, Facebook or, or later in the recording, we just ask that you would, I just ask that you would anoint my words and that I could minister well through what you have to share. Amen. Amen. Matthew 5, verse 14. Your lives light up the world. Let others see your light from a distance. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? And who would light a lamp and then hide it in an obscure place? Instead, it's placed where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others so that the commendable things that you do will shine as light upon them. And then they will give praise to your Father in heaven. Who you are and what you think, how you solve problems, how you interpret events, how you feel about circumstances, they will never be identical to another person. Mm -hmm. Twins can be born to the same parents and have the same upbringing and still come out completely different in the way that we solve problems, the way that we interpret events, the way that we feel about certain things, right? right. Yep. And it's your unique gifting and calling, your unique gifting that glorifies God. Amen. Yep. Your unique gifting, yep. the way that you tick. I know for me personally, I tend towards having like an apostolic teaching kind of gift. And I never really, I never really want, I'm never really jealous for another person's gift. But you know what I do tend to be jealous of? Is other people's personalities. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody else been there where you're just kind of like jealous of a of somebody else's like personality? I mean, do, like don't get me wrong, this isn't like a low self esteem, self deprecating thing. But y'all, I'm married to Sean Michael Higgins, <laughs> and he is lot larger than life, right? I mean, he just is. He's, he's like charismatic, and he's got like this persona, like. The, on our first sort of unofficial date, it was to um, the Midway. Do you remember this? The Midway at the New Richmond days, whatever that's called, the New Richmond days. What are they called? Fun Fest. Fun Fest, thank Come you. Come on. <laughs> Funnest Fest around. <laughs> New Richmond Fun Fest. Oh my gosh, this is a side note. Okay, so we did the. the Egg scrambler ride thing, you know, oh, where you get no. in the cage and it It's the Rocco planes. Don't mix oh them up. <laughs> okay, so if you've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed, but we're not similar in size. And so when the bar came down, it like hit his lap, but I was not in. <laughs> there was like plenty of room between me and that bar, and we're spinning and going, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I have children at home. Why am I doing this? <laughs> last ride we ever rode, I think, in person. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, our first unofficial date was to Fun Fest, and I'm not exaggerating, we couldn't walk five feet before somebody stopped him to talk to him. They knew him, they were like, Sean, like everywhere we go, and this now happens like across the nation. We travel, he knows people everywhere, and he just like stands out, and so I, I can tend to, you think, do you think he stands out maybe a little bit? I can tend to feel jealous about a personality, right? Because you can start to feel like, well, nobody really knows me, you know? But I started to discover that comparing myself to Sean is like comparing a dolphin to a monkey. Whoa, 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 whoa. I could be the monkey. I mean, I could be the monkey. <laughs> 
Jeepers. What I've discovered is like as I've continued my own path of like getting healthy and getting well and discovering an intimacy with the Father, I realized that the kingdom of God needs me to be fully me. But sometimes you all y'all need the calm one. <laughs> sometimes that's what he refers to me as the calm one. The calm before the storm. <laughs> and that because we're so different, and I'm, I'm referring to me and Sean now, but I'm talking to all, all of us, because we're all so different, we complement each other. We complete each other. We Come make on. the body of Christ yeah, look yeah. full because we are each uniquely gifted, yeah. and the kingdom yeah. of God needs me to be fully me. Yeah, yeah. The kingdom of God needs you to be fully you. Amen. Right? Amen. So we're going to go to Ephesians 4. This time I'm going to, actually, I'm going to be reading out of the... Uh, New American Standard. And you guys, I say that, I tell you the translation so that when you're reading along, you're like, that's not what my Bible says. <laughs> you know why. <laughs> so I'm going to read Ephesians 4, and we're going to start with just the first seven verses. And it says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing forbearance to one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So did you hear that? There's one Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all, and through all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So I like to think of it this way. If I was coming up to a, like a soda fountain, we have, we've got Coke and we've got Sprite and we've got root beer, thank you. We've got orange soda. We've got, what's the purple stuff? The grape soda. We're not going to do diet. Diet's like, <laughs> diet's the false prophet. <laughs> But there's one thing in common with all of those, and that's the soda water. Sugar? Sugar is the, the, sugar is the commonality. There's the soda water, but each one is a different flavor. And that's what this is saying, that there is one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all, but to each one of us a grace was given. So I have Sprite grace, and Steve has Fanta grace. And Sean has root beer grace. Does that make sense? So yeah. there's the there's the commonality of the one spirit, the one father, but we each have our own grace given according to the gift that was given. That's good. And then we're going to keep going here. So still in Ephesians 4, Numbers 8. Therefore it said, when he ascended on high, he led captive of a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men and women, to human beings. Now this expression, he ascended, what does it mean except that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is himself also who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, some as pastors, and some as teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service to, to the building up of the body of Christ, until... We all attain the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Stay with me. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But seeking the truth in love, we are now to grow up in all aspects unto him, um, unto him who is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by that which every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part 
causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Whoa. Whew, there's a whole lot there. A whole lot there. We're going to start breaking it down. So it says, Christ ascended and he gave gifts to us. Okay? And then it lists the five, and this is where we get the fivefold ministry. Everybody, anybody ever been, uh, heard about that, the fivefold ministry? So the fivefold is the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Have you heard of it, Bruce? Yes, Look it up. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Study Ephesians 4. It's in there. You'll find it. It's just after Galatians. <laughs> Fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. So an apostle, we're just going to break these down really quick. I'm not staying here long on purpose, okay? A lot of people, we talk about spiritual giftings, and they go, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, wipe, wipe the slate clean, you guys do the work, okay? Apostles, apostles are, in, that's what they also call the disciples. The 12 disciples were also called the apostles. Apostles are disciples of Jesus, and they're sent to lead and oversee. They're sent. Apostles are sent to lead and oversee. Um, a prophet, a prophet, somebody who holds the office of the prophet will foretell the, the future. They speak into the future. They can tell you what the future looks like, but they can also cause the future. That's the prophet. Uh, they, the prophet has an incredible gift to see into the heavens, heavens realm. An evangelist, they have a heart for the lost, and they, they tend to be like a Pied Piper of sorts. An evangelist, like, can't sleep at night because they're of the lost souls. Evangelist. A pastor has a heart for the people and is very much focused on, like, emotional health and well-being. And then a teacher that's kind of self-explanatory, it has the, they have the gift to just really download understanding, right? So that's the fivefold ministry. What is it for? Equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints. Thank you very much. So it says, he gave some as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. So these five gifts are from Christ, from Jesus. That's what it says. He ascended and he gave these five gifts. I'm going to tell you right now that if you're looking for one of those titles, you're not ready for it. Whoa. <laughs> if you are looking for a title, you aren't ready for it. Okay? And really, why would you want to be the person who's just handing out tools? Because that's what it says we're doing, equipping the saints. I'm giving you a hammer. I'm giving you a screwdriver. I'm giving you a wrench. We're equipping the saints. We're building up the body for the work. Okay? So if you're looking for the title, don't. <laughs> the title will find you. In fact, there were many, 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 many years, Stephen Rodden knows this is true, that people were like, you should be Pastor Libby. And I was like, nope. Come on. You should be Pastor Libby. Nope. Why? I was still working on pastoring. Inside. I was figuring out this pastor gift. God was honing and purifying and figuring out who this pastor was before the title ever came. And the title was sort of like, all right, fine. Wow. <laughs> That's the truth. Yes. If you're looking for the title, the title will never come first. Right. True. Okay? Yeah. Verse 12, and this is in the Passion Translation, it says that their calling is to nurture and prepare all of the holy believers to do their own work of ministry. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. So the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher are for nurturing and preparing all y'all to do your own work of ministry. Come on. Yeah. But how many of you know that you can have the heart of one of the fivefold without having the office of right. one of the fivefold? So you can be very pastoral. You can have a heart. I'll let you know. Sometimes you'll see like people who have a pastoral heart are in like marriage and family therapy. They're not. Their title is not pastor, but they have a very pastoral heart because they care for the people and the emotional health. Does that make sense? So you can carry some of the. You you need to carry the heart of it before the title would ever be there. Okay. Now we're going to jump to 1 Corinthians, and this time I will be in the Passion Translation. So 1 Corinthians, and we're going to be in, whoops, wrong one. We're going to be in chapter 12. What? 
Just drop my bookmark. All right. Now, 1 Corinthians, we're going to be in chapter 12. Okay, we have 20 verses to read. Oh, boy. It's going to be good. Stay with me, okay? I told you. I told you. I warned you. I told you ahead of time. It's a long drive, but it's, it's, the destination is worth it. Okay. Chapter 12, verse 1. My fellow believers, I don't want you to be confused about spiritual realities, for you know full well that when you were unbel unbelievers, you often were led astray in one way or another by worshiping of idols, which were incapable of talking with you. Therefore, I want to impart to you an understanding of the following. No one speaking by the Spirit of God would ever say that Jesus is accursed. No one can, no one can say Jesus is the Lord Yahweh unless the Holy Spirit is speaking through him. It's the same Holy Spirit who continues to distribute many varieties of gifts. The Lord Yahweh is one, and he is the one who apportions to believers different varieties of ministries. You guys with me? Yeah. The same God distributes different kinds of miracles that accomplish different results through each believer's gift and ministry as he energizes and activates them. So not only does he distribute, but he energizes and activates it within you. Each believer is given continuous revelation by the Holy Spirit to benefit not just himself, but all. That's what we just read, right? It's the equipping of the saints to do the work. And, that's, and then that's what it's re referencing here in 1 Corinthians. Each believer is given continuous revelation by the Holy Spirit to benefit not just himself, but all. For example, the Spirit gives to one the gift of word of, word of wisdom. To another, the same Spirit gives the gift of the words of revelation of knowledge. To another, the same Spirit gives the gift of faith. And to another, the same Spirit gives the gift of healing. And to another, the power to work miracles. And to another, the gift of prophecy. And to another, the gift to discern what the Spirit is speaking. To another, the gift of speaking in tongues. And to another, the gift of interpretation of tongues. Verse 11, remember, it's the same Holy Spirit who distributes, activates, and operates these different gifts as he chooses for each believer. So we're going to pause for just a second here. That, that What he just listed was the nine gifts of the Spirit. So what I, what I talked about before was the fivefold ministry. That was gifts from Christ, right? Now the nine gifts that they just felt that was were just filled out in 1 Corinthians are the gifts of the Spirit. I personally believe there are more than nine. Yeah a lot more than nine because yeah. how, we already just said that how many variations and facets are of there are are there of god right. well how many people are in this room right. how many people are in your state so there are nine listed here i believe there's a whole lot more but let's keep reading uh first corinthians 12 and now i'm on verse 12. just as the human body is one though it has many parts that together form one body so too is christ for by one spirit we were all immersed and mingled into one single body, and no matter our status, whether we're Jew or not Jew, oppressed or free, man or woman, black or white, doesn't matter, we're all privileged to drink deeply of the same spirit. In fact, the human body is not one single part, but rather many parts mingled together. So if the foot were to say, since I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body, it's forgetting that it's still a vital part of the body. And if the ear were to say, since I'm not an eye, I'm not really part of the body, it's forgetting that it's still an important part of the body. Think of it this way. We're almost there, guys. If the whole body were just an eyeball, how could you hear? And if the whole body were just an ear, how could you smell? But God has carefully designed each member. Did you hear it? Yeah. He's carefully designed you and placed it in the body to function as he desires. A diversity is required. For if the body consisted of one single part, there wouldn't be a body at all. So now we see that there are many different parts in, and function, but one body. Right. Have you ever stubbed your pinky toe? Yes. <clears throat> it is like the worst feeling. It's like crippling, but it's the tiniest little thing. Yeah. <laughs> it is the tiniest little thing. We are all functioning together. Yeah. I need you like you need me. The pinky toe actually brings balance to your body. Do you know that if you don't have it, you, you have a hard time with balance? Your physical therapist, occupational therapist will teach you that. 
the pinky toe, the tiniest little thing that the second you bump it, it's gonna like affect your whole body as far as like your pain receptors, also brings balance to the body. That itty bitty little toe. We need it. Unless you don't have one, Grace too. Grace to you. We all work together. We're gonna go back and reread a couple of verses here. So back to Romans 12. No, wait, have we been in Romans 12 yet? No, I'm even getting lost in my own trap on my own. Okay, last, this is the last Bible verse, I promise. Read uh, Romans 12, we're gonna go to verse 3. Okay, God has given me grace to speak a warning about pride. I'd ask each of you to empty self-promotion and not create a false image of your importance. Can we just say amen? Amen. <laughs> no false promotion. Or self-promotion or false pride. It said, honestly assess your worth. How many of you know that you can have like this like, oh, it's not me. So it's this like humility thing that's actually just like false, yep. from false pride. Yep. Just... Assess your worth. You're worthy of it all. I had a conversation with my kid the other day. 12-year-olds are hard, you guys. <laughs> I had a conversation with my kid the other day, and I was like, guess what? I have everything you need and most of what you want. I have everything you need and most of what you want. She's like, what are you saying? I was like, I'm saying I could take it away. Or I could give it to you. Yep. And guess what? You're worth having it. Woo. So don't lose it. <laughs> I was in the basement. <laughs> so empty yourself of self-promotion. Instead, honestly assess your worth by using your God-given faith as the standard of measure. And then you will see your true value with an appropriate self-esteem. In the human body, there are so many parts and organs, each with a unique function. And so it is in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we've all been mingled into one body. This means that we are all vitally joined to one another, with each contributing to the others. God's marvelous grace imparts to each of us varying gifts and ministries that are uniquely ours. So if God has given you the grace gift of prophecy, come on, you guys, tune in here. So if God has given you the grace gift of prophecy, you must acti activate your gift by using the proportion of faith to prophesy. If your grace gift is serving, then thrive in serving others well. If you have the grace gift of teaching, then be actively teaching and training others. If you have the grace gift of encouragement, then use it often to encourage others. If you have the grace gift of giving to meet the needs of others, then may you prosper in your generosity without any fanfare. If you have the gift of leadership, be passionate about your leadership. And if you have the gift of showing compassion, then flourish in your cheerful display of compassion. There are as many unique giftings as there are people in this building. Yeah. And we must discover within ourselves an accurate, what does it say, the accurate assessment of your worth, you, our, our accurate assessment of worth, to know how you fit and how God has uniquely gifted you. Every gift comes with grace, okay? Grace is not simply unmerited mercy. We talk about grace in that, you know, Jesus gives grace to over, overcome sin, right? It, but it isn't just unmerited mercy. Grace is also that thing that causes you to flow with ease. Yeah. Yeah. To move within whatever you're doing with just like, it's like second nature. And there are so many different facets to the way that you function that it, I don't get. But you flow with it in grace because you have been given the grace gift of fully being Eric. You've been given the grace gift of fully being you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Our, your gifting is your ability. Okay? 
your gifting, so our, in order to have a full spectrum, we have to have gifting, calling, and anointing. Your gifting is your ability. And that can be natural and that can be learned. Your calling is your identity. So many times we get caught up in our identity being what we do. Come on. Come on. But the calling is the identity of who we are that allows the functioning of what we do to rise to the surface. If I get caught up in if I get caught up in my identity being pastoral, then I'm just performing. Ooh, right. But if I know who I am and my calling is my identity then my giftings will flow with grace. That's what it says. If you have the grace gift to lead, then lead. If you have the grace gift to teach, then teach. But the identity it comes from this perfectly found relationship with Jesus. The, the more intimacy we find with Jesus, the simpler the identity is. And the, the identity gives the calling. And the anointing gives you purpose. Whenever I step into moments of anointing, and I know that it's flowing for the, like the equipment, that's one of the verses that we read, that it's not for my benefit, but for your benefit, for everyone else's benefit, that anointing gives me purpose. Because then I know that I'm, it, it just begins to flow, and it's, it's simple, and it's not complicated, and it's not exhausting, and it's not draining. It's just a flowing because it's a grace gift. Whatever makes you come alive is what you have the grace for. Come on. Right. Yeah. Right. So good. Whatever makes you come alive is the grace gift. It's what you have grace for. It's probably not Netflix. Just like <laughs> <laughs> whatever you have, whatever makes you come alive is what you have the grace for. And people ask, well, so how do I know what my gifting is? How do I know what my gifting is? Well, first of all, you should go to Live by Design. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. If you don't know what that is, you need to look it up. Or, sorry, that was so random. <laughs> if you don't know, figure it out. <laughs> that was like, sorry, that was like the most random statement. If you don't know what Live by Design is, you should talk to Stephen Rhonda. <laughs> Stephen Rhonda have a ministry called Live by Design, and it's helping people to figure out What's my gifting? And what's my identity? And who am I? And how does it work? So there's one. If you don't know what your gifting is, if you don't know what your calling is, try Live by Design. Your intimacy with the Father is going to help sort that out. There it is. Yep. Yep. There. Yep. What makes you come alive is going to help to sort that out. Right. But here's the thing that I want to want to ask you. What's right in front of you? What? Not me. <laughs> What's right in front of you? Your Bible. What are you doing? Reading. Right. What are you putting your hands to? What are you doing tomorrow morning? What are you doing Wednesday afternoon? What's right in front of you? Right. Oftentimes people want the gift that comes with the most attention. Ooh. We want the gift that comes with the microphone. We want the gift that comes with what seems to be making the biggest impact, right? We want those things that seem to be making the biggest impact. We want the thing that looks like it's getting, like it's get, like you're getting somewhere, that has, is getting noticed. But I'm going to tell you right now, your gifting comes in the secret place. Yeah. All right. yeah. so good. If you're going to the gym every single day, we probably don't need to know because it's going to show. Yep. Right. Come on. You don't have to tell people. It's just going to show up in obvious results, right? Your, your gifting is going to come from doing what's right in front of you. Yes. It's going to come from your, the secret place. Yep. Go home and be the husband that Ephesians 5 says, and lay down your life. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going to learn how to be a leader. Ooh, right. okay. Okay. All the wives say, Go get him. <laughs> <laughs> Go home and take care of your babies. And you're going to learn how to be a nurturer. 
that's going to hone a pastoral gift. Mentor the people around you. And you're going to understand what it means to have followers. Everything that Sean and I do has started in the secret place. Ten years ago, we said, we want... We know we want to be in full-time ministry. We don't know what that looks like, so I'm going to be the best mom I know how to be, and he's going to go tab tape and do it with excellence. We just did what was right in front of us. We kept saying yes. We kept leaning in to what was right in front of us. There were a lot of days God told me, watch the leaders in front of you. Watch them. So all you got to do. Watch them and then check your heart. Watch and then check your heart. Watch and then check your heart. That's what I did for years. Watch and check my heart. Why? Because in the secret place, God was preparing me for leading. But it didn't look like leading. It looked like me doing what was right in front of me. You, we, okay, this is, I could be wrong. Sean and I have debated this a couple times this week. So if you don't agree with me, it's all right. <laughs> I agree with me, so I'm going to share it with you. And, and I think it's interesting, too, because since there are so many different facets of God, every Bible story probably has, like, a whole bunch of different ways of looking at it. You know, we hear about, like, the ways things are interpreted, but what about this? So I was reading Matthew 14 in, uh, yeah, Matthew 14, when um, Jesus tells the disciples, Get in the boat and go to the other side. And then they're like stuck in the storm. The, it says the winds were against them. So Jesus saw that they were struggling and he walked on the water to come out and greet them. And then what do we all talk about? Peter, Peter got out of the boat and walked to Jesus, right? But Jesus didn't tell him to walk on water. Jesus just told him to get in the boat. Jesus just told them to go to the other side. And there's a whole lot that's taught about like how miraculous it was that Peter walked on water. I think Jesus was like, all right, sure. But it's not really what I told you to do. (laughs) I mean, nobody really talks about the disciples that just like did with, like if I tell my kids, go put on your shoes. And then like in the process, they're like, mom, look what I colored. I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I told you to put on your shoes. Right. Right. Right? How much happens that's miraculous in just staying the course? How much, how much is, are we losing out on because we want the big shiny thing? I would love to know what happened with those disciples that stayed in the boat. I mean, they were probably like, oh, Peter. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, Peter. <laughs> like, could you just put on your shoes? Like, that's what she <laughs> But we're so, it's not sexy to just stay put. Right? We're all like, I gotta move to this place and I gotta do this thing and I, you know, God wants me to move to this job and I'm supposed to change marriages and I'm supposed to try this new diet and I'm supposed to. What did you just do today? And do it well. I'm right about that. I know. And so here's, here's my challenge to you when we're talking about spiritual giftings, and I'm going to start wrapping it up so whoever's hosting, get, get yourself ready. There are people in your life who are there to equip you. Lean into that. Right. And it doesn't have to be somebody with a title. Right. Also, As you are starting to discover your unique gifting, you might be the pinky toe, you might be the kneecap, you might be the gallbladder. Whether you're seen or not seen, you're a vital part of the body. You have a unique gifting and you have a vital part that makes us all work together. I can't do it all, you can't do it all. We have to work together. And the more that you find the self-discovery of your self-esteem and an honest assessment of your self-esteem, find your gifting. The gifting is that which is you find natural ability in, but your calling, go to the identity. Don't find your identity in doing. Right. 
Right. Find your identity in who God says that you are. Amen. Get in the secret place and listen to your papa. And then when you start to discover, like, man, I just flow with that with ease. That just like that's real simple. That that's your grace gift. There's an anointing on that. There's a purpose in that. It's a gift of grace that helps you to flow simply through whatever you're doing. And if you, I promise you, if you keep doing what's right in front of you with excellence and keep saying yes and leaning in, your calling is going to keep rising to the surface. Everything else is going to start to fall off. All the things that aren't functioning well, all the things that aren't serving you well, or those things that just need to be honed. They're honed, huh? <laughs> <laughs> are going to rise to the surface. I promise you that they will. And when we all start to function in our own grace gifting, the body of Christ becomes who we're always intended to be. Thank you, Pastor. That was spot on. And, and so these grace giftings, they're to serve. They're to serve the body. All these things that it says, do it with excellence, do it with excellence, it means you're here to serve the body and mature the bride. And just a quick few things. Dale and Sue Reba, I talked to you this morning. This, when you said find people that are there, that are able to equip you and they might not have time, that's you guys. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's you guys. You guys are yeah. spiritual giants in this body. Woo! Yes. If you guys don't know the Rebas, get to know them. Yeah. yeah. They have been around, they, they have poured their heart into this place. 100%. And they, and yes. they are amazing and they have a heart for God. They, they're passionate about yeah. Their love to each other and their love to God. And all of it flows together. And they have stayed the course. And they have stayed the course. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And also, this one might get me in trouble later, but Julie. Yeah. Julie. <laughs> you've been very diligent about doing what's right in front of you. Yeah. yeah. And in that, now comes the time. We're on the precipice of something huge. Yeah. 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 And identity is coming with that. Amen. I, I know there's, you know. Whatever you call it right now, but you're gonna understand. <laughs> you're gonna understand what all this is for, and there's huge things coming yeah. in personal growth and healing yeah. through this. And you have built a team around you mm. that is to raise your arms yeah, yeah. when they're getting weak. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we will have people up here to minister to you if you have any questions, anything. Anything that you just need, some healing, some prayer. Uh, other than that, be blessed and go eat. Yeah. <laughs>